Patter, 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 patter. Uh, the word has lost all meaning now. Patter. Okay, Twitch says we are live. I was just repeating the word patter until we got there. Um, so today we're going to continue by looking at um, Jovian lunar eclipses, or actually lunar and solar eclipses in general, since we, we can pretty much generalize at this point. Um, I did read some tutorials on uh, Basilian elements, but they didn't help. Uh, they do imply that you can do a lot more with them than just figure out if an eclipse is occurring, uh, but we probably don't need that. Um, there are other issues we need to deal with, which is, one is, um, boy, I hope I have one of these things up. Um, let's see, well, let's see. I do not, but um, pretend like you can see that image from yesterday. One of, the, one of the issues is we need to make sure the eclipse is occurring on the on the um, on the light side of the planet, not the dark side. The dark side, uh, not the side that's hidden from the sun, because obviously you don't see an eclipse if you can't see the sun. A solar eclipse if you can't see the sun. Um, that is actually not as easy to do now because okay, I'll have to bring up my. Um, I, I can't really. Uh, I, I was going to try to do this without um, without do you know? Oh come on! You know my freaking password. I gave it to you. And plus, I'm logged in. Oh, here we go. Um, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Okay. And the issue here is we need to make sure that, well, this in this case, it's obviously happening on the day side. Uh, previously, when I had the sun on the x-axis, the day side was pretty easily just this, although there's going to be a problem with that in just a minute. But now that the sun is not necessarily, it is not on the x-axis most of the time, it's going to be harder to determine what the day side of the planet is. But there's another issue here that is not trivial, unfortunately. Um, what if the sun is rising or setting? Well, not the sun necessarily, but the thing that's doing the eclipsing or being eclipsed is rising or setting. Uh, then, then we have an issue there because uh, for example, if you're on Metis, Jupiter's uh, closest moon, Jupiter is very big. Um, and if Jupiter is eclipsed, we just can't ignore if like the halfway point of Jupiter is below the horizon. We can't ignore that I and it's eclipsed. We can't ignore that. Uh, I mean, you know, sorry. If the sun is eclipsed and Jupiter is partway down, um, you know, uh, is below the horizon, we can't ignore that. Um, so we do need to deal with that issue. Uh, it might be that if we deal with the sun, we, we can get away with not dealing with the eclipsing object. Uh, but there is something we need, to, we need to look at there, especially, I mean, on Earth, the, the sun has a one-half degree, uh, one-half degree radius, uh, angular radius, um, about 30 minutes. Actually, I think the radius is 16 minutes, 16 seconds. But, but roughly speaking, it's big enough that uh, the sun is not a single point of light, and that could be an issue for setting and rising. We might be concerned with uh, when the sun is eclipsed, even as it is setting, or not, you know, not fully uh, fully viewable. The third thing, which we're all going to ignore, is refraction. Now, because we have because of our atmosphere, when the sun is geometrically below the horizon, we can still see it, uh, and the standard value of refraction is 34 minutes at the horizon. So, when the sun is geometrically about half a degree below the horizon, it still appears to us as though it's on the horizon. Uh, and that is a calculation that uh, we, we use to make, uh, you know, accurate sunset sunrise predictions. However, uh, because not all, all of our eclipses are occurring on Earth, um, and we really I really don't want to deal with the refraction on other planets, even if it's computable, uh, and because um, I had a third reason, um, and because we're also ignoring the fact that these things aren't perfect spheres, we're not going to get the level of accuracy we need where refraction is going to be a real issue. Uh, yesterday we got stuck a little bit because we were running some hard math uh, that I wanted to avoid. Not hard, but ugly math. I mean, hard math, you know, that's, uh, that's actually qu quite a bit of fun. Uh, ugly math, not as much fun. Um, so we're either going to just plow through it today, or we're going to go step by step by computing a value, intermediary value, and then computing off that, computing off that. That's a little bit more inefficient, but I mean, C is a very fast language. We have not had any problems with speed, really, so we can just continue uh, doing that. Final note for today. Um, earlier today, before I started streaming, I moved a lot of this stuff around here on this VM, uh, partly because I want to be able to have the files available to my main machine. Uh, the v VM is LaPath, or LaPath if you're 
Castilian maybe. Uh, and the main mission is Sao Paulo, uh, both cities in, I think, Brazil. Um, so, I, so I remounted, moved some stuff around. Um, it looks fine. I think everything's going to work the way it's supposed to work. I did run some tests. Um, but if we get run into something broken, uh, it'll be a waste of your time, and that makes me happy. Okay. And I don't think this to-do is applicable, applicable anymore uh, because we have sort of figured out the formula is the arc sign. Now, one other thing is we came up with that arc sign formula earlier. I know we did. Uh, so I'm going to look for it real quick to see if we... Um oh, right, because it's... We, sorry, we put... Yeah. Deciding whether to put uh, files into uh, directories based on subject or on the technology they use is something I have a problem with. It's one of the many, many things I have a problem with. But um, but that it is one of the things. So I think... Um, Let's see. I think maybe very early on we uh, we computed the, um, the, uh, the the very early on what we computed was from what position do the sun and the moon have the same angular radius uh, or angular diameter angular radius same thing not well no they're not the same thing but but one suffices to get the other and we did determine that formula we had which was like sr minus tr or whatever it is we will find that formula now um, and I think we're focusing on BC. It's good to never know which one you're using, but we can get around that by using LS minus LAT. And we see that yesterday we were looking at, yeah, because that is yesterday because we're on Greenwich Mean Time on this machine. Eclipse Mechanics, so I think that's where we, we have it, but uh, yeah, it's not that hard to compute the... Um, we went through sort of this rigmarole here, but um, Jesus Christ. Wow. Um, we went through a lot of crap to get to this. Um, SR minus TR over SX minus TX. That's the X position. Now there's an other point where the angles are going to be identical, and it's going to be like right over here somewhere. Um, I'd like to look at that. Uh, that's going to be, we're going to also be computing the penumbral eclipse. And that is going to be where the cone of the penumbral eclipse is minimal. Um, and then it'll grow uh, grow in both directions because penumbral eclipses are well actually only on this side on the left side to the x decreasing is it going to be a penumbral eclipse but the cone is going to go both directions just like this cone here goes in both directions even though there's no umbral eclipse here um, and I'm tempted well let's see if we can go ahead and draw it on this diagram and this was not what I planned to start with but I don't really plan these things so you know whatevs. I'm going to make these lines a different color if I can. Well, obviously I can. Um, and these are the lines that are go going to go from, ooh. And once again, we have to be careful here that we're not. Um, these are going to be the penumbral lines. And they are going to go from, yeah, they're going to make things totally incomprehensible here. The penumbral lines go from one to the other. Okay, we've got to make these lines a better color not by adding points to them. All right, let's go to this line here. I guess we can go to settings like this. These lines will be a nice, lovely, I don't know, red color. Oh, I like that. Okay. And then, of course, we have to do it for this other penumbral line here. This is a bad idea, drawing multiple, um, drawing multiple things on a single diagram when they're not really that related. Um, I'm doing it anyway because I'm doing it that's a tautology. Um, but yeah, I would not recommend doing, I'm just doing this for right. I might even still separate these out. Okay. So now what we're looking at, this is the, um, and unfortunately it's not because, again, we're cutting this off. This really should be perpendicular here. Um, but let's, let's allow that for right now. Uh, this, any if you're within this cone, which just grows in size, and in this case the whole Earth is, that's where you can see a partial eclipse. That means a portion of the moon is blocking a portion of the sun. Um, of course, that includes the entire umbral eclipse. Um, but also, when you're outside of this, so this is total eclipse here, partial here, partial here. Uh, at some point, we're going to figure out how to sort of, um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll be okay with figuring out sort of where, uh, where you see each one. And again, the, the only question we're really interested in is, what is the maximum and minimal eclipse on the planet, which can be like, 
you know, partial somewhere, total somewhere, total everywhere, no eclipse at all anywhere. Th there's like, I think, uh, nine possibilities there. And actually, I don't think that all of them can be, are physically possible. Okay, so what we have here is previously is a, a huge mess that I need to clean up, but let's deal with it for the moment. Um, sine angles, yeah, this is, um, this is the actual angle, the point, um, this is the point where uh, the x value of the umbral cone is. And we're going to go ahead and put that into our C program. Uh, before we do that, um, because we never do anything correctly, um, it is also where the arc sine of, okay, got to be a little careful here. <coughs> It is also going to be where the arc sine, uh, the angular radiuses are going to be the same, and it's going to be on the x-axis. So whatever this point here is, we'll call it x. Um, so whatever x minus, well I guess, guess this point is going to be s, it's not really e. Um, Sx minus x, um, it's going to be the radius of r. Um, this value is the arc, this is the angular radius as measured from any point x. It is um, where this is sx. So the angular radius is going to be the arc sine over the distance, and the distance is x minus sx because there's only one, uh, there's only one variable here. There's only, we're only moving in the x direction. For tr, it's going to be um, tx minus x. So we have this. Uh, so if I'm pretty sure if we solve this, um, Really? That should not be that difficult. Okay. Man, this mathics is crap. Okay. Now the thing is, if the arc signs are equal, there's really two solutions here. And maybe we're just not looking. One possibility is that if the arc signs are equal, that the numbers themselves are equal. And that is should be the freaking... Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, my bad, my bad. It's this, sorry. That, so that time it was my mistake, not mathics. Gorgeous. So we have the same value, which is what we expected. But again, this is a much easier way to see it. It's the point where the arc signs are identical. So that is SR of my, you know, times TX times blah, blah, blah. We will go ahead and convert that in and find that point. Um, and at some point, we might get rid of it. Uh, we might decide to just make the whole thing mathematical. For right now, it's a good thing to have. It's a good, it's a good point to know right now. Um, so let's go ahead and compute it in our... Uh, I think we actually did it last time, and I left it in sort of the... the un, um, I left it in the code without actually uh, converting it. So I, it, earlier today, when I was moving stuff around, it gave me an error. So that's something you can be excited about, if you want to be. Okay, so this is where we are. We're in this eclipse around the world. We have done the matrix for rotation. Oh, yeah, here it is. And I didn't have it commented out, so it caused a little bit of a problem. So now we're going to say... Um, so we might as well make this a spice double. Uh, hello, hello, hello! Mr. Lactose Intolerable. Very funny name because, of course, the pun is on lactose intolerant. Good to see you here again. Um, tell me, tell me... Tell me more, tell me more. I, no, that's not right. That's from Greece. So, if I can do anything for you, let me know. Um, if you can do anything for me, definitely let me know. So, we're going to call this point cone x, um, because this is the x value of the cone. The y value is going to be the same as it is for s pos and t pos. The z value is going to be zero, because we're looking at this in a plane. And so that is going to be uh, sr, which I th no, 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 no. Good, we've really messed this up, because SR, it's going to be SR0, actually. Um, I'm just chilling right now. Well, chill away, chill away. So uh, we're going to say SR0 times TX, and that is going to be T rot, that's our new position, and zeroth element there of that, minus... Besselian is in the same vessel from Bessel's inequality? Probably. I think there's only one famous m mathematician named Bessel. He's done a lot of stuff. Um, there's even a Bessilian, uh, like a curve, like sort of a set of polynomials, not polynomials, but a set of sine waves that are named after him. 
There's even a Bessel function, I think, uh, none of which comes into here. This is a bacillian elements. I don't think, I don't really know, but I, the, I don't see them coming into this problem. Um, this is just a method he invented to uh, make it easier to find where eclipses are. And his big, um, so his big, big idea here was that we put S and T, the two things, you know, the sun and the moon, the things that's eclipsing, on the same value of X. Uh, and then put the Earth, the things being eclipsed, on the origin. And I had something similar. I had the sun and the Earth on the same, you know, same value of X at zero, and the moon not. But I think his, his, his method makes the math presumably easier, though I've actually been doing it for a while, and it's not that much easier. Um, but it is, it is, it is, it is, I think, easier enough that uh, it's still easier than my method because it would that that's harder to, because you have to can calculate stuff at angles, and I'm just going to pretend like that made sense. Um, all right, so S rot zero times T R, which is of course T R zero. The whole thing over S R zero minus T R zero. Okay. So that's where the cone is going to have its x value. Now let's, um, yeah, I'm tempted to not want to do this, but let's see. Um, yeah, we should probably print out cone x to make sure it's actually doing what we want. Um, I was thinking we could maybe get a little bit further on that, but but no, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and print out cone x. And cone y and cone z are, are, are known. So that's not, we don't need to print those out. And we don't calculate them, so. Even if we wanted to print them out, we couldn't because we don't calculate them. All right. So now let's make sure everything's still working. And it was earlier today, but that doesn't mean it will now. Uh, so we do. We always touch BC occultations because we need to touch some C file to make it r to make it run again. Okay, got a zero out of that. Very nice. Um, now let's run it with some values. Okay. Cone X two thirty zero. Let's see and. Okay, so it's to the west of S. Oh, sorry, S rot and T rot. Um, hmm. That does not look good. Um, because these are both negative. I guess. Do I care? I mean, multiplying by negative one is not a rotation, but it is, it's like a flip. Um, and so I guess one thing I thought earlier was the two vec function that we use up here um, would make t to s point to, oh, okay, hang on, t to s point towards the positive x-axis, and that is the positive x-axis. Um, I guess I was kind of hoping that t pause and s pause would end up in the positive, uh, T S rot and T rot would end up in the positive x axis, which they do not appear to be. Um, we have positive y value, so do I care about that? So here we have S rot to the left of T rot. Ooh, okay, hang on. Let's take a look at our diagram here. Um, so from T to S should be this vector. And I want it to be positive. I mean, it is positive. But that doesn't necessarily mean that these two things are positive. They could be way to the left over there. Um, is, that, is that a bad thing? I mean, you still would have... I don't really like that. Um, all right, now we need to figure out if there's a way we can force these things to look like this diagram in the sense that uh, C and e, uh, <laughs> the moon and the sun uh, centers are both in the upper right half plane, this sucker here. Uh, I don't really like them on the left hand side there, so let me see if there's something we can do here that allows us to do that without breaking anything else. Um, sounds of sub. So we got, and in this case it looks like, I mean, we have S pause. Uh, I need to get, I need to stop printing S pause and T pause, honestly, because at this point they don't help us any. Those are the positions we had from J2000. They're not gonna, um, they're not gonna be useful to us anymore. Um, S rot is way to the left, T rot, and then the Earth would be at zero. Yeah. And if I multiply this by negative one, this will become negative. 
but can I just multiply the x coordinates by negative one? That would be a flip around the uh, that'd be a flip around the origin for the x axis. Um, it wouldn't change any of the angles or anything, and it wouldn't change where the Earth is because the Earth happens to be at the origin where that would be unaffected. Um, the only sort of ugliness here is this would no longer be a rigid rotation. Um, so that would be kind of the bad thing there. Um, and the other question is, do I give a rat's ass? And the answer to that is probably no, I don't. Um, let's go ahead and leave it the way it is now, but we'll put in here our to-do uh, in, in README stream, which I guess, uh, you know what, we should actually look, um, put it in here, BC lib to-do, can we force x to be positive without, can we force cone x to be positive without breaking things? And I think we can, depending on how we define break and things. Okay, so now we know where the co we now sort of know where this point is. Our diagram is in 100% great now. Um, the other thing we know is the, this angle, and uh, we can um, we th that's the shared angle of the the angular radius that this is uh, that you know these these are both giving us. Um, and from there, we need to um, we need some way to determine whether the the, the focal line you know the the, the umbral cone comes within a certain distance of Earth. And we need to, there's actually several possible cases. Um, so I, th and the other, the other problem is we have to be careful that we're actually looking at the umbral cone sort of to the right of this point. It doesn't, it's not, it's, if this is the part that intersects that's closest to Earth, that doesn't help us any. So we sort of need to limit this to say for, you know, if this is, if this line is going to be parameterized by T, for T greater than zero, which point is closest? Um, and I think we can show that if this, if it, it's negative when that happens, t equals zero will be the the closest point. Um, I think we can show that as you travel along this line. Uh, actually, I'm not even sure that's true. That's kind of ugly. Um, I was hoping to say that as you travel along this line, your distance from. No, I think that's right. Your distance from a shortest here, you know, travels becomes longer as you go along here. Um, so one way to do this is we can draw the perpendicular from the center, to from the origin, to where the uh, to where this line is. Uh, other ways we can actually just look for um, that might be the best way actually. Um, that might actually be the. I, I was thinking we'd basically just look at the slope intercept form of this line, uh, and then compute where it's closest to the origin, uh, which is something we did yesterday, and it wasn't that hard actually. Um, and we should be getting the same answer either way. Uh, now, to do the perpendicular thing, we know the slope of this line. The uh, perp any perpendicular to it will have slope negative one over that slope, and then we just need to find where we have negative one over that slope and goes through the origin, uh, which is not difficult um, because I think that means the uh, the b term becomes zero. Uh, so we just have a, s a line with a slope and no, and the y-intercept is zero. Um, which is actually fairly educational if you're learning algebra because that you do learn about that stuff. Doing it with calculus is kind of overkill, um, but I guess. Well, okay. Let's see what we let's see what we did yesterday and how far we got with that. We did we did get somewhere with that. We found out that the sine of the angle is this sucker. Really? That's hideous. All right. Um, hang on, hang on. I'm pretty sure that's not true. Um, so we found that for this value of x, uh, the, s the angles are equal. So we could just plug that into um, so here x would be this value. Okay, now it's beginning to look ugly. I'm beginning to see where we might get some ugliness out of this. Um, minus x. Let's see if we can simplify that. Okay, now I'm beginning to see why it's not that easy. <laughs> All right, so we did. We also, by the way, looked at Mathematica yesterday, or Wolfram Cloud, and tried to get some of these answers. And we found that they're they're pretty darn complicated. Um, I mean, if we try to solve directly without going through uh, subpoints, um, without going through intermediary variables, we could have a lot of crap to compute here. Um, I don't even think it's more efficient to compute all of this 
than it is to simply uh, simply go step by step. Um, I could be wrong. It might be that this is really easy to compute. And this apparently... Oh, did I try to simplify that? Okay, hang on. Maybe we should try to simplify that. Yeah. Because that might be a really ugly form. So simplify. Okay, that's actually not as bad. I mean, it's not great, but that's not as bad. But we still have, like, fourth powers in here. That's just, like, really, really insane. It, I mean, you would think it's not this complicated. Um, and I'm wondering if there's really this is really the simplest form. I'm not, I'm not trusting that this is the simplest form. Um... For example, over, over here, you have the square root of s r t r, s x minus t x to the fourth, but that square root is just s x minus t x squared. Um, why does Mathematica not get that? And uh, and you know this is uh, well now Mathematica has another function called full simplify, which is even more powerful, uh, which does even better job of simplifying but takes longer to simplify. And by longer, I mean sometimes it could take forever, I in the sense that we could actually time out this calculation. Oh, well, this is looking a lot nicer. Well, that's actually still doesn't do what I wanted to do here. Um, and I get the feeling SX minus TX squared could almost be factored out of all of these. Um, so still, still quite not happy here with something. Um, and I'm going to do something that I shouldn't do. I'm going to not only say that SX and TX are positive, I'm going to say that SX is bigger than TX. Uh, and this is not always true, but it turns out that it'll work the way we want it to work. It'll do what we want, therefore we pretend it's true. That sounds like a pretty good thing. All right, now we're going to try another full simplify, see if that helps. Um, And again, okay. Mm okay, now the fact that it doesn't uh, simplify this, because um, we know it's a positive number to the four, that there's there's something more going on here. It, uh, well, actually, it's just because, at a very fundamental level, um, and this is just a weird fact about mathematics, you could make the argument there's no such thing as the simplest form. Um, you could also make an argument against that, but it, it's not that easy to find the simplest form. So it's quite possible here, Mathematica saying, well, for some reason it's not picking up on this. We can force it to pick up on that too, um, but I don't know how helpful that'll be because this is still a pretty nasty looking formula. A lot nicer than we had before. Absolute value of SR minus TR. Okay, that we could maybe fix by saying SR is bigger than TR. But we're gonna stop here because I really don't want to enter these kinds of formulas into C because they are they are fairly inefficient and also if we make a mistake it's very difficult to see where the mistake has been made. So we we're going to do uh, the we're going to do this one step at a time somebody else later can improve it it is in uh, it is in GitHub so do what you want. Um, okay so we figured out where uh, Conex is now we need to know where uh, so blah, 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 where's my thingy? So we know where Conex is. Um, we now need to know its slope so we can find the uh, we can we can know the formula for the line, and actually we probably need to know its x y intercept as well. Which uh, this is a horrible drawing because it looks like the uh, y intercept is very very close to where the cone the, you know the conal x is, but it's not. It could be anywhere. All right, so the slope of this line is going to be we know the um, we know the arc sign is um, the two arc signs are equal um, to this. Hang on. Let's see, S R T R. Um So the cone angle this is actually half the cone angle, but we're gonna call it the cone angle. Spice double cone angle. And the cone angle is gonna be determined by from wherever this is, um it's gonna be the arc sine of this over this distance. And it should also be the arc sine of this over this distance. And we're gonna compute it both ways. But if it's not the same, we've done something horribly wrong. So we're, we're in the final version, we're only going to compute it once. But here we can compute it twice. 
So it's going to be arc sine of TR0 over the distance to TR, because we're all on the x-axis now, that is just going to be um, TR, T rot, 0 minus uh, cone x. And then cone angle 2. I just realized it sounds sort of like Conan. Conan the Barbarian, or I guess there's Conan the Barbarian. Um, so let's just see. So these should be very equal, because th if they're not, our conex is bad. So this should be the, the arc sign that we need. And we're going to actually convert it to a tangent, because that's the tangent is the slope. Um, and then we'll say CA1, CA2. And these will be cone angle 1, cone angle 2. And I guess if we're being very precise, we should probably use the bigger of these values to compute to pre preserve precision. Make. Good. Done. Um, okay, good. It does look like the conal angle is uh, remaining not the same. With th they're remaining equal to each other, which is good. Um, it's negative, which is because we're on the wrong side of this. I mean, the diagram is on the wrong side of this. Um, it changes very really slowly. That's kind of interesting. Um, that might be useful somehow. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and push this to Git now before I forget. Um, and I'm doing this on another machine. You can't see it. I'm also doing other terrible things on this machine that you can't see. Although that last part is probably for the best. Okay, let's give it a second here. Okay, all pushed in. Okay, so now we uh, we want to know the uh, we really don't want to know the uh, the uh, the angle. We want to know its uh, we want to know the tangent of this angle because the tangent is a slope over um, ri <laughs> rise rise over run, and that is that is the that's the slope of this line. Um, I I tried to see if we could do it more cleverly by without computing the formula for the line like could we just you know look at the signs and see how this and, it, and we probably could I mean there's always a way to do that but I think um, I'm going to stick with the simpler method right now of just computing the lines formula nx plus b and then just using to see where that comes closest uh, to the earth uh, to the planet in question which is in this case is the earth um, Right, and we are, by the way, right now, okay, there's two lines here, and they have, uh, their slopes are the negatives of each other, uh, so, and their intercepts will be different, although in this case they look very similar. We do need to compute both of them. We're going to kind of do one and then the other. So that's, okay, so now we only need one cone angle, because that was just a, and we'll use the one for S, because it is a larger value, and therefore we'll get more precision out of it. And then we're going to take, now this is horrible, because, um, actually, is this too horrible? The tangent of the arc sine has a, has a simplifiable value. And in fact, we looked at that yesterday. Uh, the tangent of the arc sine of x, and if I spelled it right, arc zin, that's a, that's a very special function, is x over squared at 1 minus x squared. So uh, in theory, we could say, uh, we could take this value squared, sr 1 minus x squared of this, where 1 minus this squared, um, x over 1 minus, yeah. Um, so I'm being lazy here, and I will make a note of that. To do um, simpler formula for tan a sine exists. I'm not going to put it in here, but it does exist. Okay, so now we have the conal angle, and no, we don't actually. We have the cone slope. Sorry. Um, we could have gotten the angle, actually. I don't think the angle helps us, though, because we're just going to end up getting the slope. Okay, so now we have the slope, and we have the x, we have where it intercepts a given y value that we know about, um, which happens to be like tr0, yeah, it, it's s, r tr rot 0 is where it is, but it's a known quantity is the, is the important thing here. So now what we want to do here is we want to find, um, we want to find out why I can't be, be clean with this. This is really messy. Okay, so now we know, uh, let's go back to our diagram. So we know where this point is, and we know uh, the slope of this line, or it's negative. Either one will work. 
And now we need to figure out where the, uh, where the y-intercept is. So we can get this into mx plus b form. Although again, there's a real temptation here to, um, to parameterize this line and then just use the parameterization to figure out where it's closest. So let's see if we can do that. That might actually be useful. So we will, um, we will, we will do that. And in fact, that's almost kind of nice because mm, because we can use Conex directly. So here, so here, I, okay, good. Let's. Uh, I'm going to call this p line for parameterized line of t is equal to, uh, we start at t equals zero, we start at conex, which I'm very happy with, uh, plus t. And then here we start at um, the y value, which is like t, which we're going to call, I guess we're just calling it the y value. This is the specific y value that we're lining up everything. So uh, cone x goes from zero, and we're going to go from y to, here's where it's the, the cone slope, uh, m times t. So when we go t direction, when we go t and x, we go m times t in y. And the nice thing is at zero, this is going to be equal to uh, the the start, the equal to the point here where we or the cone, will, the point of the umbral cone. Say that five times fast. So this is really good. This is actually pretty good stuff. So this is nice. This is the uh, let's make sure p line is zero, or if I spelled it right. It's cone x, y, p line of... I don't think there's any special thing going on about p line of 1. Uh, there's no um, there's no value. So the, the distance between p line of t and 0 is just going to be the norm of p line of t. Yeah, or, or not. Actually, that's just going to be p line... Oh, actually, I did that wrong. Right. Because we're trying to minimize it, we can just minimize the square here. So we can just do this. And man, I wish I had, uh, we need to get rid of those absolute value signs. Um, yeah, hang on. And so the distance from the origin at point at time t will be uh, cone x plus t, I'll do this correctly, squared plus y plus m times t squared. That's actually the distance, we're going to put in distance squared. That's not the distance, but we're minimizing so we can do it either way. So at this point, enough math mathics is helping us at all. OK, so we want to know where that is minimal. So we can take the derivative of dist, of t of dist 2 of t with respect to t, set that equal to 0. and solve for t. Oh my god, it worked. Um, so t, uh, we're going to write this down. Oh, what the hell? Did I need to do a yank? All right, hang on. You stand by. I'll just copy this whole thing and we'll trim. OK. Um, nearest value for, uh, I guess this is actually dependent on conex and on m, um, although it really doesn't matter at this point, is equal to this fairly not bad looking formula here. Okay. And then we need to compute the value at that, uh, we need to compute the value at that as well. The, the, uh, the x value That's interesting. Oh no, this is the cone, right? So this is where the cone is closest to uh, to the uh, to the uh, the origin. And 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 this is so this if the okay, this is where we can get into some funky like funky different cases. But let's go ahead and compute that. Um, except it just occurs to me that we're not parameterizing lines, so this doesn't help us. We actually want to know what the uh, what the um, x and y coordinates are here. So, mm, do we care? No, we do. Yeah, we do want the we do want to know the x and y coordinates where we were closest to the origin. 
Um, unless t is less than zero, then we want, oh, Jesus Christ. I guess we don't care. Um, okay, we'll, we'll go ahead and compute where, you know, where this uh, line is closest. Um, but my concern is if it's closest on, like, the wrong side of the Earth, uh, it's not as interesting. But it, mi it might actually be. That might be fine, though. Um, we also might have an issue with which one is the positive and which one's the negative. So lots of, lots of things that can go wrong here. Um, so I guess we don't really want that near us. We want to know... Um, so this is the value of t, where it's the minimal, but we actually want to know... Cone x plus this, that's the x value, and y plus m times this value. That, that did not really go as well as I expected. Worse than planned. Okay, hang on. Y plus m times this whole thing close off. So this is the point we want, and I'm now beginning to think we might want to get it another way, because this is not as helpful as I thought it would be. Yeah, maybe I should say simplify. Oh! There's a really nice symmetry to that. Oh yeah, because of course the y coordinate is just... Uh, That's so, so simplified, I don't think that's even correct. So that's how simple, simple it is. Okay, let's go back a step here now. We're going to solve um, mx plus b. We're going to go ahead and find the slope of n, y-intercept at this point. We already know the slope is, of course, um, the slope is already, uh, we is cone slope. So we have cone slope, and this is not math fix, this is just me doing some math. But we have y equals cone slope uh, times x, x times cone slope plus b. Uh, to find the intercept, we set, um, right, and we, uh, okay, this y here is a um, free variable. It's not the y we talked about earlier. So that's going to suck pretty badly. Um, the one point we do have here is uh, y equals x times, sorry, x value here would be um, cone x. Uh, times cone slope plus b. So this might not be too bad, actually. Um, and here we're talking about a very specific y value. So it's going to be this. So the intercept, so we have the slope of the line, now we want the, the intercept, and that's just going to be the special y value minus the product of the x-coordinate and the slope. Uh, do I believe that? Do I believe this? x cone x times cone slope plus b. Yeah, I do believe that. Now, there's, there's like we said, we still have some issues with negatives and positives, but let's go ahead and do this. So over here, where are we? And we'll call this the cone y-intercept. Because that's what it is. And what was it? La, 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 la. Cone x times cone slope, uh, and it's going to be y, which is uh, t rot, uh, we'll say s rot 1. It's actually any of them, um, because the y values are all the same. So this is the cone's y intercept. So now we have mx plus b. Now we want to see where is mx plus b closest to the, um, to the origin for any line mx plus b. And if you're wondering if we make some of these functions, the answer to that is we probably could, um, and that they would actually be useful outside of this, uh, outside of this program. Uh, but for right now, we're going to go ahead and sort of try to do, the, do it in here. I'm hoping it's not as bad as I think it is, although pretty much everything we're looking at says it is. So now we're going to have um, the point is going to be x m times x plus b. That distance from the origin is going to be x squared plus m times x plus b quantity squared. That's the square of the distance. Um, we'll call that dis2 of x. So 
So at a given point x, our distance from the, uh, the center of the origin is this. Um, and now, God willing, this is, the, uh, this is the, uh, the derivative with respect to x. And this, God willing, is how we set it equal to 0 x equals, so this is very similar to the formula we had before, and I'm not, it's not super surprising, by the way. Um, so, why, oh, why can't I cut and paste? Okay. Okay, so that's the value of x. Um, and I guess the question is, oh, god damn it. Uh, what we really want to know is what, not, not where, what the value of x is, where it's closest. We want to know the closest approach of that, of that line to, um, uh, to the origin. So this is just tells you the value of x when that happens. But let's see if we can do, um, okay, we're going to, we're going to use you. x given. And now this 2 of this is, and we're going to simplify that. Although, it's not too bad, actually. It's b squared over 1 plus m squared. Now that we know that, and we know both b and x, um, now I'm wondering if we can actually simplify that expression. By the way, that is not the distance. That is the distance squared. We're going to stay in the squared space because it's a lot easier to deal with. So now that we have that, I'm wondering now if we can go back and simplify, because we know that uh, that um, b is uh, y minus, we know the intercept is s, well, y minus cone x times cone slope, so, which is our special, we're going to call it y0 just to make, to avoid confusing it with y the variable, cone x times cone slope. This might give us some magic that tells us um, we could have done this all a lot easier. Uh, 1 plus cone slope squared. And so this is the closest approach of the line. And if it simplifies, which it might, we might have something here that's, that's a little easier. Minus y o over 1 plus, that's not really that much simpler. That doesn't really seem to simplify that much. Okay. Uh, so we have the, the, we have the uh, minimal distance is now going to be this. Um, so why are, we go why are we going through all this? It is because we're insane. Um, I'm min dist origin. I'm, I'm really being used variable names a little bit too long. B is, of course, the cone y-intercept square. No, 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 undo. Be gone from this place. Okay. Is going to be the um, cone y-intercept um, squared over 1 plus cone slope quantity squared. And again, that is the, the square to the distance. So we're, we should probably say cone moon dist origin Oh, Jesus Christ. Two. And the two means squared, even though we should probably uh, put the word squared in there somewhere. So why is this important? Well, this this is actually interesting now, because if we know that um, the distance from the origin is less than q squared, or qr0 squared in our case, if it's less than the radius, then we have the uh, some point of the, uh, the the line is touching, touching the Earth, uh, which means we have a solar eclipse somewhere on the Earth. Um, so that's interesting because, are we right now printing out, like, for every value? I need to look at BCL. I think we will actually, oh, I need to reload it. Um, I think right now we're not actually doing a, um, oh, no, we are. Oh, wow, we're still using the... Um, that's kind of strange. I, I, I'm surprised Eclipse Around the World is actually still um, giving us a return value that's not completely useless. I think it is completely useless, but it's making this go through um, this loop every time. I hope. 
because we are getting printouts from this. So now what we can say here is, um, uh, okay. Um, come in distortion. So if that is less than QR0, we know that we are, that's not the only way we can be in an eclipse, but we know we are definitely in an eclipse if that happens. So now, we can do this. If this value is greater than QR0 squared, we can, um, we can do an early abort. And I think because this function has to return uh, something will return zero or something, but that's that's not a problem. Uh, now the now what should happen is we should only be getting these values when uh, one of the cones is one side of the cone is touching. Unfortunately, because our cone slope can be negative, and because we could be on the wrong side of the of the origin, uh, this could still be pretty ugly. But I think at the very least it should give us uh, you know some point where we're we're, we're inside of an eclipse. So this, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Half spice double and spice double equals cone white. Damn it. Every time. I wonder if I can really macro that to be like, oh, wow, I can't even do that, can I? I've actually got to do this. Times cone y intercept because ev it, the, the power function here is actually, um, and by the way, you can do a two divides to, to make a, uh, division by the, uh, the squared. Unfortunately, even the star star function in, in C is not used for uh, power. They have a math pow function, which is just pow here. Um, but I think it's really inefficient, and I think multiplying uh, twice is actually much more efficient. But let's see if that at least fixed the problem. Nope, didn't like it. Oh, and here we just want to print the cone angle from now on. Suggest parentheses. Oh, flippin' hell. I think it's because we have a binary operator there. So, the order of operations is screwed up. Cone x, cone angle. Oh, we don't even bother to compute the... Right, cone slope. We decided we're not going to make... The angle's not really useful to us. The slope is. And if this compiles, yep, eventually this will compile. Not today or tomorrow, but maybe eventually. If this does compile, I will push it to Git because uh, we we cleaned up quite a bit of it now. Uh, all right, it did compile. Let's push it to Git. We'll call it checkpoint, just like we call everything else checkpoint, so no one can figure out what the hell we're doing. Um. Okay. And okay, so we've done that. Now let's make a. Okay, so now we're getting yeah, we're getting much fewer, uh, many fewer uh, prints because we're only printing when uh, the cone hits the uh, hits the uh, the is closer than you know hits the hits the sphere basically. Um, T S S rod is this. T rod is T S rod. Cone X. Um, is minus eight six four one cone blah 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 is this okay right um that's one of the conal umbras this is the tw this is the one of these lines I don't know which one though the other one is going to be the negative slope but pretty much the same thing so we can say um, cone y intercept and I guess cone x is going to be the same for both the uh, both lines. Cone slope is going to be almost the same for both lines. One's going to be the negative of the other. Cone y intercept is going to be different for the two lines. Um, and in this case, um, so I don't think I need a cone slope two, but I probably need a cone y. And I guess this is actually a line, not a cone, but we'll, we'll still pretend it's a line. That's a cone. Um, a 
So let's pick cone y intercept one. Um, and we will still have some issues with this once we do this because it's quite possible that the cones completely miss the planet, but they're big enough that they sort of encompass the planet. Um, And I guess that's going to depend on whether cone x is positive or negative, and whether the y, the fixed y value that we have, um, which is t rot g one or s rot one, depending on what you want to call it, uh, is positive or negative as well. I think. So this is getting a little bit more complicated, but let's let's plow through. So this will be the y intercept. All right, we're going to go ahead and do it for both. So this is cone slope 1. Cone slope 2 is merely the negative of that. And I guess I'm tempted to put an absolute value here so we know that cone slope 1 is always positive, but I don't think that's actually a good idea right now, so we, we won't do it. So this will be cone y intercept 1. Um, let's see. And y intercept 2. And for 2, we're just going to say the uh, cone 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 x stays the same. It's cone slope minus cone slope 2. Uh, spice dough. Oh, Jesus Christ. I think at this point I'm going to have to abbreviate this a little bit. Uh, cone min dist squared. Uh, because now we have to put a 1 in front of it. Is this sucker... Uh, we need cone y intercept 1 and cone slope 1. And cone y intercept 1 and cone slope 1 and then the other one the minimal distance of the second one um, cone intercept 2 intercept 2 and I'm 90% sure I forgot to change a variable somewhere so this won't compile but uh, let's see cone slope 1 cone slope 2 the cone x stays the same now from, from here on I should only be using cone y intercept with numbers okay and I should only be using cone slope with numbers. Cone slope one, cone, no, actually, no, okay. Um, and now we, if both of them are bigger, we, we can, um, cone, yeah, we need to change this variable here. If both of them are bigger than the radius, then we can, uh, we can continue, even though that's still incorrect, but, but we're getting closer to the condition we actually want. Um, if they're both greater than the, r the radius squared, uh, that means that neither cone is touching. And we can uh, continue. Um, but there are all sorts of weird things that are going to go on here. First, let's see if this compiles. That's, that's, one of, that's always one of the good things, to see if something compiles. Yep. Cone slope. I'm not even, I'm not even printing it, but it, wants, it needs it to be a valid variable, which actually does make sense. Okay, awesome, it compiles, and hopefully it gives us only a few values. Uh, cone x, uh, that, cs that, ts rot that, um, y value very consistent, it's good. Um, So the minimum, so we, we're not actually printing out the minimum distances, but we're only printing the stuff when the minimum distances are less than, uh, are less than uh, the QR squared. So in other words, the cone uh, touches, <coughs> the cone touches the sphere. Okay, I'm going to apologize. It's, I've only been streaming for less than an hour. Um, but I am going to stop now, and then we might be able to pick this up later today. Thank you for watching the stream. Hope you enjoyed it or whatever.